Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pro Wrestling Inside and Out, our look at World Championship Wrestling uh, from October 26th, 1985. Rodney, take it away. All right, we're going to open up with a hot opening with Jimmy Valiant in the ring, and the Midnight Express make their way to the ring to double up on Valiant. In from the outside into the from the audience, the mystery lady comes in and knocks out, well, begins to knock out uh bobby eaton but they freeze frame and they go to the open and then we open with tony and uh david uh david <laughs> david shivani <laughs> tony tony shivani and david crockett and they're going over today and of course today on the program we're gonna have abdul the butcher against watch the it billy graham watch it and then we've got a five thousand dollar arm wrestling contest billy graham superstar billy graham against the barbarian then they talk about the the situation with tully blanchard and magnum t where they're having the i quit match and of course they showed part uh, that double count out, the 52 minute, it ended in a double count out. Tremendous match. I wished I was there and wish we could sing that entire match. I believe that would have been awesome. And of course, they were all setting up for that I quit match for the Starcade 85 coming up. Match number one, Manny Fernandez against Tommy Lane. Uh, of course, it's Manny Fernandez winning that one with the <clears throat> flying burrito. You wouldn't get away with that today. But that was the flying burrito on that one. Uh, Fernandez over. Then we go with the interview. It was pre-taped with Ric Flair. And he's talking about Dusty Rhodes coming back. And he's supposed to be back on November 3rd. This, I believe, this show played on November 2nd. So that was going to be the very next night in Atlanta. Uh, then it's the interview with Ole and Arn Anderson, the national tag team champions. Uh, Arn's talking about Dusty Rhodes. He's talking about his return to the ring for November the 3rd. Ole talks about... Uh, uh, Dusty again, and it talks says that it's really too soon for him to come back. Match number two is Buddy Landell with James J. Dillon against Tom, uh, Tony Lane. Uh, Landell wins that with the spinning elbow, followed by the figure four leg lock. Match. Uh, then we go to an interview with Buddy Landell and James J. Dillon, and I think Dillon in that interview pretty much says things are about to change for Mr. Dillon uh, because he says that this is the first time in two years that he was not manager of the year. Uh, and he also talks about Landell and his quest to face the national heavyweight champion, Terry Taylor. Match number three, the Rock and Roll Express against Mike Davis and George Stout. South. It's the double drop drop kick on South uh, with by Robert Gibson. Uh, was in with the pin, Rock and Roll Express over in that one. Interview with Tully Blanchard with Baby Doll. And of course, Tully Blanchard, the United States heavyweight champion. And he's talking about Magnum T and the I Quit match. And then they go to... Uh, Kansas City in an interview, uh, Rick Stewart does an interview with Bob Geigel, the president of the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, in that, uh, Bob Geigel announces that he will not sanction an I quit match because of its um, uh, the, the emotional uh, situation between T.A. and Tully Blanchard. So he will not sanction uh, an I quit match. And then they come back uh, and then it's uh, match number four. It's Billy Jack Haynes against the Black Cat. And it's the full Nelson, uh, Billy Jack Haynes winning that with the full Nelson. Uh, back with the interview with Tony and uh, about uh, with Tony Schiavone talking about Dusty. They had his doctor on in the uh, same like Starcade control room type thing. Uh, they talk about Dusty and the new boot, an illegal boot, I think. Anyway, they show his new boot that was designed by the same people that do his uh, other ring boots. And they still talk about Dusty returning on November the 3rd. Match number five is Magnum T.A. against Keith Eric. It's the belly to belly. That was no surprise. T.A. winning in that one. And then we go with the Starcade Report. And now, right now, they've added another match. It's going to be a bull rope match between Ron Bass and Black Bart. If Bass wins, he gets a five-minute bull rope match with James J. Dillon. Also, the National Tag Team Championship versus uh, the United States Tag Team Championship as Ole and Arn Anderson, the National Tag Team Champions, faces the United States Tag Team Champions, Wahoo McDaniel and Billy Jack Haynes. The cage match, of course, World Tag Team Titles, Rock and Roll Express versus an Ivan and Nikita Koloff, and, of course, a match for the World Heavyweight Championship, which they have not announced his opponent, which I think they're going to do that next week. Interview with the superstar, Billy Graham. He's talking about the arm wrestling contest with the Barbarian, and then it comes Paul Jones, comes out there, and he says, uh, I, and I love Paul Jones in this. Uh, he says, no, no. He he grabs the microphone, and and Billy Graham's trying to talk, and he turns his back to him while he has it. You can't. Nobody can hear you. Nobody can hear you. He was. I think he was awesome in this. And Paul Jones said that he would have to wrestle Abdullah the Butcher first before the five thousand uh, dollar arm wrestling contest because the five thousand dollars was uh, uh, Paul Jones' money. Uh, then it's match number six. His superstar Billy Graham against Abdullah the Butcher. 
Abdullah goes for that big gigantic elbow. It's uh, Graham moving out of the way and Ket drops his own elbow, starts choking Abdullah the Butcher. Here comes the uh, Barbarian and then uh, Barbarian and um, uh, Abdullah and uh, Paul Jones all double up on Abdullah comes well down with that elbow smash. And then it's the Barbarian coming off the top rope with headbutts as Abdullah and Paul Jones uh, hold uh, superstar Billy Graham. Then we don't, of course, do we do not have the arm wrestling contest after uh, all of that takes place. Interview with uh, Tony and David. Uh, of course, they were, again, talking about no rest arm wrestling contest. Match number seven, we have Benny Taylor, or Benny Trailer, I should say, against Pistol Pez Watley. The flying head, but Pistol Pez Watley winning in that one. Interview with Black Bart and James J. Dillon talking about the upcoming uh, bull rope match. Uh, and of course, again, uh, I, I skipped ahead. It said uh, this is where uh, uh, James J. talked about him being manager of the year, and for the first time, uh, he was not going to be manager of the year this year. Uh, Billy Jack Haynes. Uh, he talks about Billy Jack Haynes. He also talks about Thunderfoot. Uh, then at Black Bart talks about Ron Bass and the upcoming uh, bull rope match. Then an interview with Jim Crockett uh, talks about the next week's match. It's going to be Thunderfoot with James J. Dillon to face Billy Jack Haynes. Then we have a Starcade update again. We go over and they're going to have a Mexican a de a death match, also signed uh, for a sombrero. <clears throat> it's going to be Manny Fernandez against Abdullah the Butcher. They recap the uh, situation with Magnum TA and uh, Tully Blanchard, the I Quit match. And then they go ahead and I believe he signs it right there. Uh, Jay, uh, Jim Crockett says that he's going to overrule uh, because he has a, a prior contract with uh, Tully Blanchard. And so they are, in fact, going to have the I Quit match <coughs> for the United States Championship, and I do believe that will be in a steel cage. Then it's an interview with Tully Blanchard, mad about the whole situation with the I Quit match, and then Tully Blanchard heads to the ring against Denny Brown. Just super good match in the end. It's Tully Blanchard with the slingshot suplex. Blanchard's out. Then Ole and Arn's out there, and they talk about – Ole talks about lawyers. He talks about Jim Crockett. He, t he makes a – he uh, gives a stern uh, – just a, he, he just warns T.A. to look out because the Andersons will be looking for him for what they did. And then uh, Arn's talking about the uh, – about Dusty Rhodes and his steel toe boot. And he said, that's not legal. Uh, and then match number nine is Nikita Koloff against Mac, Mac Je uh, Jeffers. Um, Nikita is out there with uh, Crus Crusher Khrushchev and, I and Ivan Koloff. In the end, it's the Russian Sickle winning that one for uh, Nikita Koloff. They have an interview with uh, Nikita Koloff, uh, Ivan, and Crusher Khrushchev. Nikita's still talking about Ric Flair. They talk about the Road Warriors, and they talk about the upcoming Starcade match with the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, that And Ivan in this one, he's just awesome. I, I loved Ivan uh, with that interview. Uh, then we go to back to the matches. Match number 10 is Ivan Koloff and Crusher Khrushchev. <laughs> with Nikita Koloff against Ricky Reeves and Jerry Garman. Uh, the Russian sickle from Crusher Khrushchev as the, uh, puts uh, Koloff and Khrushchev into the winner's circle on that one. And then we go to do another update with Starcade interview with Jimmy Valiant. And he's talking about uh, Big Mama, that mystery lady. And he shows uh, they show uh, the entire clip that we, was the beginning of the program with the Midnight Express and uh, Jimmy Valiant as this mystery lady comes in and knocks out uh, Bobby Eaton. Then it's match number 11. Jimmy Valiant against Jimmy Backlund. The lady comes from the front row, apparently. I never did see her there before, but comes from the front row and gives Jimmy Valiant a big old smooch right there. <laughs> watch it. Watch it. It was, it was great. And then Jimmy, uh, as as uh, uh, the lady leaves, it's Jimmy, Jimmy Backlund coming behind of on uh, Jimmy Valiant. Uh, the lady Draws back and knocks Jimmy Backlund out, and it's uh, one, two, three, and it's uh, Jimmy Valiant, the winner of that one. Then at the last, it's Jimmy Cornette out there, or Jim Cornette out there. He's talking about the mystery lady, talking about Jimmy Valiant. Jimmy Valiant comes out, Cornette runs, and Valiant talks about the mystery leader. Somebody give me her number. Call me. Get in touch with me. Give me a letter. And they replay the mystery lady coming into the ring, and then they close. Uh, for a I thought this was a wrestling. spectacular show. The, the, yeah. Even the beginning, uh, when they, they went through that match with Magnum T.A. and Tully Blanchard, and they did the thing where they both got knocked down, man, the fans were hot after that match, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that was, was tremendous. And that, Tommy Lane, I'm not a big fan of Manny Fernando's. Uh, Manny Fernando's. <laughs> Manny Fernando's. <laughs> and, 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 of course, Manny Fernando's is getting all – 
<laughs> built up and hacked up with a big sombrero Mexican death match. <laughs> yeah, but Manny Fernandez, Tommy Lane match was good. I mean, that, that was a good match. Flair interview was always great. And I loved it that they did it the week prior and they, nobody was in there. They did it at ringside. And I thought that was – and Ric Flair, man, he was on fire with his interviews at this point. Yeah. Uh, and the Andersons, <laughs> both interviews they do, Ole was – Oh, yeah. He was on. And Arn was too. Uh, Landale was good. JJ, JJ was great. <laughs> Did y'all happen to watch that Rock and Roll Express? Because sometimes some of us frontwards matches up. Did you watch that Jack with Rock and Roll Express uh, South and Davis match? Yep. Uh, Robert Tripps. Yes, he did. Yes. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. And almost, and almost out of the ring. <laughs> I can notice Ricky was trying to not laugh, <laughs> you know, during this. He was he was kind of doing this and trying not to do that. Uh, but he did. He almost tripped and fell out of the ring. And, boy, George South's bump at the end of that thing, he, could, he took that drop kick and he landed on his, almost basically on his neck. This shows you why he should have been pushed. More than he was. Yeah. Rick Stewart loves seeing Rick Stewart on the show. Yeah, Rick Stewart. And what a voice he had. Uh, and he, I think he was jockeying for a position there. This is Rick Stewart for Bob Geigel. <laughs> it was the NWA office. Billy Jack Haynes. What did y'all think about Billy Jack? <sighs> Don't do steroids, boys and girls. <laughs> I he mean, was Eric great though, didn't he? You, you know, he's good, but everything, he just looks like he's so uncomfortable. He's so tight. He's so worried about flexing that everything just looks stiff, which I, I know he, he never had a reputation for actually being stiff in the ring uh, too much, but it just looked that way. Well, he looked like a million dollars, though, didn't he? Oh, man. Yeah. Because wasn't he supposed to look like a Billy a Billy Jack that was yep. a movie? Yeah. Yeah, and Tom Laughlin, that was the character he created and starred in the movies, and Tom Laughlin sued him. Yes, he did. Uh, okay, that's so he used to wear the uh, Billy Jack hat, whole nine yards. And he was just Billy Jack when he first started. Yep. They added the Haynes later. <laughs> Paul Jones, when he comes out, <laughs> he tells Billy Graham, superstar Billy Graham, he looked like a fortune teller. <laughs> <laughs> It was so good when he did it, and then old then old Billy Graham says, well, "I'm fixing to go in here and I'm going to beat this fat slob." <laughs> That's what he talks to him. He calls him a fat slob. That's right. <laughs> and I loved the match. I thought Abdullah and, and Graham had a great match. It was really good. Yep. Uh, now, when Barbarian comes in, Rodney says he did not see Rodney Garvin or Miss Atlantic Lively. Miss Atlantic Lively. At, at, but she was sitting at ringside the whole show. Okay, well, I missed that. I, I totally missed that. During this this melee between uh, when, when Barbarian comes out, the fans was looking down at, she was sitting right there, I mean, right at the front row. They were looking and asking if they were, that, if they were going to come in there and help. And, you know, just sitting there. You know? But uh, Ronnie Garvin did a great job, but he had to sit there that whole show. He was sitting at ringside the oh, whole I'm, show. I'll have to go watch. back and rewatch it because I did not see him out there, I, her out there. <laughs> but they were wanting him, uh, her, him, whatever. They were wanting Miss Atlanta Live to come out and come in. Uh, Pez, man. They missed the boat on Pez Wadley. Big time. I mean, they, they should have they should have pushed him. And and Jim Dillon was probably the, – the interviews that he did, and Black Bart, best interview I'd ever heard him do. I mean, that interview was tremendous. This crew was definitely motivated. They knew exactly what they their, their goal was, and they were hitting it. They were hitting it each really? time. Let me ask you this question. Uh, I don't know that you, maybe I missed it. Maybe I was not. Did you talk about when they went to and showed the video of Magnum T.A. kissing Baby Da? They did do that. They had a whole recap of the whole Baby Da situation. 
And then they talked about the I quit match in the cage. And then I think that's where uh, Jim Crockett made the announcement that they were going to have that match anyway, regardless of what Bob Geigel said. When, when Tully comes out and they fight each other, no wonder people bought a ticket to see that. Yeah, that was, that was intense. The whole <laughs> thing was well done. It is not something you could do today, you know, but, but man, when they did it, that worked. It was the right kind of heat at the right time. Yeah, it was it was some good stuff. I mean, this whole show was getting ready for for uh for this dark cage, and Dusty was on at this yeah. point getting ready for this show. I felt bad for Jeffers because I'm gonna tell you, Nikita was beating him pretty good during this match. I mean, I don't usually he's very uh light, but he didn't look like he was being light with Jeffers in this one. I don't know, uh, and 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 I'm going to tell you, Jimmy Garvin doing that thing and Jimmy Valiant. I thought that was tr tremendous. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it was really true. Uh, we got a question here. Uh, Richard Hood asks, uh, "What do you guys think about Paul Jones as a manager, Jack?" Now, I like Paul Jones as a manager. I, you know, I got to see Paul Jones when he still wrestled, and I thought he was a tremendous wrestler. I thought he was great in the ring. But, you know, there comes a time when you just can't do that anymore. And uh, the Crockett's took care of him, gave him a good job. And I thought he always did well with what he did. Um, you know, he probably won't go down in history as one of the great managers of all time, but I thought he was good in what he did with this. You know, the, the whole Jimmy Valiant angle lasted for years, which was way too long. <laughs> but, but. He was he was good. I I enjoyed him. Rodney, uh, Paul Jones was the classic manager. Uh, that's what I liked. He was the classic manager. He had the cane. He had the tuxedo. He and and I, his interviews were not bad. I you know I used to think they were, but if you compared them to Cornette, but Cornette was very different. Yeah, and Paul Jones was you know they you don't want them to be the same. But I I thought and especially when he looked. When he grabbed that microphone and he turned his back to Jimmy, uh, to Billy Graham, I love that. I've never, and actually never seen that before. Never seen that before. And that, to me, that, that was, See, awesome. I mean, we could, we could laugh at it, but he wasn't doing it in a funny way. Yeah. No. You know, that, that, that's the difference between what was done then and done now. Paul Jones was a uh, Timothy uh, said Paul Jones was a, be was a better wrestler. Uh, they gave him too many silly gimmicks as a manner of just letting him be himself. Uh, and unfortunately, Timothy, he that was what he wanted to do. They didn't tell you what to do back then. Yeah, and I agree with uh, Timothy though. Once he was with well, later on with uh, when he was Rick Rude and with um, Manny uh, Fernandez. Manny Fernandez. Yeah, I, I didn't like his outfit. Didn't like the mustache. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm, was, I'm with you. A little there. Hitler type thing, then. <laughs> I, under, I understand the heat for it. I understand what he was going for. I just didn't care for it. Yeah, well, plus, I didn't care for that either. Plus, he, later on, he, hat. he was uh, selling you some Amway uh, in the in the back of the building. Yeah, that would been his next gimmick. Yeah, uh, Richard is says Keith Eric was a jobber in Memphis. Uh, Timothy said, uh, well, he's talking about, uh, where <laughs> that has nothing to do with that, but we'll, uh, he said his favorite wrestler was 10 man tail. Didn't even know he went to Georgia. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron asked this question. Was this when Dusty was wearing a special made white orthopedic grappling boot due to the injury? Yes. 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 And actually on this particular show, they show it. And that's when Arn Anderson is saying, this is just him getting the opportunity to put a steel toe boot on. This was a great show. I give it a 10. Yeah, it awesome. I thought it was that good. Uh, how about you guys? Yeah, yeah I, this was this was a good show, and uh, I enjoyed every moment of it. If you enjoyed this video, give us the big thumbs up. Subscribe to the page. Go one step further. Hit that notification bell and share. And share the page. And if you'd like to buy a T-shirt, go to ProWrestlingTees.com and look for Pro Wrestling inside now until our next program thank you and we'll see you again right here on pro wrestling inside now